All right, guys, so the first thing that you're going to want to look at when we're talking about forces that are not acting uh, straight in the X or Y direction, if I think about this as being on my XY plane, like you do, well, now I have a vector that is not acting exactly in line with either the X or the Y axis. So I'm going to have to break that into its component vectors. So right here, I'll draw that right there so that we can see that this vector is uh, coming off of the x-axis here. Um, and so when I do this, I'm going to go ahead and break this down into my x component. I'll draw that vertically right here. I'm sorry, my y component, draw that vertically right here probably tripped you out there for just a second. And then I'm going to draw in my uh, X component in green here. There we go. And that's going to be my X. And if I have some angle uh, theta that I'm going to work with, let's say that theta right here, then I can use my hypotenuse, which is my force applied, the hypotenuse of this triangle here, um, and then the angle to determine my y and my x. And that is just breaking the vectors apart like we've been practicing. So let's say that theta is 20 degrees. That looks pretty accurate. That looks like that could be 20 degrees. And then let's say that um, my force applied is 15 newtons, something like that. That seems, that seems like it'll work. Then I'm going to calculate now my X and Y components. So I know, let me get back. So I know that for my Y, well, we know that opposite over hypotenuse is sine. So if I say uh, y over my fa, then that's equal to the sine of theta. Well, then if I uh, multiply both sides by fa, force applied, then I get y is equal to sine of theta times force applied, just like that. Um, so then I can plug in my information. I can plug in that y is equal to the sine of 20 degrees times my force applied, which is 15 Let's add that in there. So that's 15 newtons. So sine of 20 times 15 would tell me the magnitude of my y vector here. And it's acting in the positive y direction, so that's going to be a positive number. And then if I want to find my x, it's a similar procedure. We know that cosine of theta will be equal to my adjacent side, which is x, over my hypotenuse side, which is force applied again. And so again, if I multiply both sides by FA, I am going to get X is equal to FA times the cosine of theta. Now here, I'm just, it doesn't, it, remember that it doesn't matter which order you put them in. You can put the trig function first or you can put FA first. It doesn't matter, it do, nobody cares. Um, and, but that's how you're gonna break those vectors apart. And the reason that we're going to do that is that's going to allow us to figure out what is this force that's acting in that x direction causing this object to accelerate. And then if we have uh, some friction acting on it, then we can figure out, okay, if there's friction here and then we've got this force acting this direction, then what is going to be the net uh, force ac acting on my object, what is going to be the net acceleration, and so that's where we would go with this information. So the main point that I want to get to with, with this presentation is just how we take 
a force vector that's being applied at an angle and break it into the x and y components individually so that we can look at that. Also, think about if we've got the y here, this, this part pulling up, well, what's that going to do to the normal force that, the t that the, this, this surface, the ground, has to apply to this box? Is the ground going to have to push up more or less? So think about that. If I've got this force pulling up, does that mean the table or desk or whatever has to push up more or less when I have this force pushing up? What do you think about that? Let's talk about that in class. All right, have a good night. Bye.